Japanese Navy, Chief Naval Operations, Role Number 15, Captain Naval Operations, Role Number 15, Captain Naval Operations, Chief Naval Operations, Role Number 15, PSL 45-532, Scene 28, Take 4. The Japanese Navy suffered its first serious losses at the Battle of Midway in 1942 and later in the continuing struggle in the Solomons. In June of the next year, 1944, occurred the Battle of Three Princes, and here again we took extremely heavy losses, particularly in our carrier strength. Finally, what remained of the Navy was practically destroyed in the Battle of Leaping Gulf, which occurred in October of 1944. <coughs> Our records show that about 36% of the major vessels, that is vessels larger than the destroyers, were lost to the United States from Marine, that about 11% were lost to the naval gunfire and torpedoes, and finally 48% to carrier air attack. This represents 95% of our total losses which were attributed to action of the United States Navy. PSL 45-532, scene 29, take 1. The Japanese Navy suffered its first serious losses at the Battle of Midway in 1942 and later in the continuing struggle in the Solomons. In June of the next year, 1944, occurred the Battle of Philippine Sea and here Again, we took extremely heavy losses, particularly in our carrier strength. Finally, what remained of the Navy was practically destroyed in the Battle of Lady Gulf, which occurred in October of 1944. Our records that about 36% of the major vessels, that is vessels larger than the three years, were lost to the United States submarine, that about 11% were lost to the naval gunfire and torpedoes, and finally 40 8% to carry air attack. This represents 95% of our total losses, which were attributed to action of the United States Navy. PSL 45, 532, scene 31, take one. Japan has long been a maritime nation, with its life depending on shipping, even in the time of peace. 
This was far more true in this war, where it was vitally necessary to bring the raw materials by ships from Southern Resources Area to Japan, and then to distribute the finished products to the Empire. The United States submarines started at the very beginning to sink our ships, and the rate of losses constantly increased thereafter. Later, the air attacks, and particularly those of the carrier task forces, added greatly to this loss. We were in a desperate position for shipping by middle of 1944, with nothing but disaster facing us. Our total shipping losses due to enemy action was about 8,800,000 tons. Of this amount, roughly two-thirds was sunk by United States submarines. The remainder was principally lost due to air attacks, including aerial mining, but with the naval air strikes having the highest toll. The total personnel losses to our merchant, merchant marine during the war was between 100,000 and 120,000 men. All right, great. Uh, can we do that once more, please? Can we move? Okay. Yes, C-32, take four. All right. From long residence in the United States, I knew the great industrial capacities of your country. Also, I studied your method of working in the last war. I knew that Japan could not possibly make successful war against the United States. Most of the Senior naval officers felt the same way, and hence they wished me success in my mission as ambassador to the United States. Prior to the outbreak of war, Japan did make an attempt to estimate American industrial power, but the estimation was superficial. It would have been impossible for anyone to have visualized the production power of America. Once in the war, it was necessary to do the best we could, even though the Japanese war potential was only good for about two years. The tide was beginning to turn at midway at the time of my departure from New York. Wise statesmanship might at least have suggested an effort for peace in the early days, perhaps after Cyprus. But it was the fate of my people not to be psychologically ready for such early peace moves, especially in the services. Hence the disaster which has overtaken us. 